thanks very much. I didn't expect that kind of. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, okay, so uh, what I'm gonna uh, show you guys today is a new perspective to look at uh, protecting real estate. Because we are a security consulting company, we focus on protecting real estate at all its stages, whether it's uh, at the design stage, uh, at the construction stage, and at the maintenance and operations stage. So we're looking at uh, what, what's called crime prevention through environmental design. Has anybody heard of SETDEV before? Okay, so we, it's not going to be too much of an education session, but it's just something for you guys to consider. Uh, just about the company, we deliver security consulting and risk management services. Uh, mostly in Canada, we have clients in the US and in, uh, and in Europe as well. Uh, we started in 2015 and we're located in Vaughan. Our, we are a strictly a security consulting company. We do not do any other consulting, just security uh, and uh, to protect people, property, information, and reputation. Um, I should have presented a whole clients list, but we do have uh, Scotia. Scotia is a client, CIBC is a client, uh, and as well as many other companies in the, G in the GTA across the country tell us uh, we have an annual engagement with them where we assess all their uh, industrial properties and all their data centers and all that other stuff. But specifically for this presentation, I want to talk about home security assessments. Uh, some of the uh, uh, companies there, uh, we've assessed the CEO's homes uh, or, C or, or the homes of certain executives at these companies or in, in the case of the Ottawa Muslim Association, it's the, it's the house of the Imam uh, and, and other officials. Uh, what we do uh, when we talk about home security assessments, we would go out and review the physical security, right? The doors and windows and the locks, alarms and cameras and so forth. But we also look at how uh, the family or the homeowners uh, themselves view their security and safety. What kind of practices they have at their homes. Um, for example, do they know where to, where to run away to? Do they know where to evacuate? Do they have like a grab bag with all kinds of emergency uh, supplies and equipment in there? Um, we also look at the side boundaries and the gates and if there's any fences that link them to other properties uh, and what risk may come from those areas as well. Uh, what kind of signage they have in place, right? Beware of dog or, or camera or, you know, fake camera signs which are not permitted. Uh, so if you do have them or you know somebody, tell them to take those signs down immediately because they might get charged for doing that. Um, uh, we do the survey of the interior and then we prepare a home security assessment report. So if you've watched the old movie The Bodyguard with Kevin Costner, that's kind of what we do. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, we've done a few Instagram models, we've done a few YouTubers, it's, it's good. And usually they're pretty easy to do because they live in condos and the space to protect is pretty small. But we, if we have these Insta mansions and all those other places, that becomes complicated because they're on islands. and just uh, difficult. Plus what they do there is just not secure at all. So, um, But there, this is the concept of SEPTED, right? And why, why it's so important, right? SEPTED is a set of design principles uh, to reduce the opportunity uh, for crime prevention, to increase the safety of people inside the home uh, by using natural features or natural design elements that are out there. So rather than building walls and fortressing yourself in, you're basically Laying it all out in the open, right? You, you are, you're, uh, uh, you're using natural features to protect yourself, right? So I'm going to show you a couple of examples here. But before that, uh, in your opinion, right, it's a question to you guys. Uh, what are some crimes that typically impact real estate? Well, we talked about all these, you know, we, we have all these uh, uh, illustrations we talked about earlier. What do you guys see in your industries, right? What are some crimes that happen in property? As of late, uh, a lot of people selling homes that uh, they don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, fair enough. Okay, yeah. We're working on a solution. Uh, yeah. Like, I got a vacant property that yeah. I keep seeing like homeless people go into. Every, every yeah, yeah, months, yeah. So yeah. Like, Dumping encroachment, yeah. yeah. What else? All right, there's the break ins, right? There's theft, there's robbery, and there is abuse, right? And all sorts of other things. So we're going to look at how do we minimize the attractiveness for these crimes to happen, right? Not just to stop robbery or stop car theft. I know they steal all the Lexus these days. How do we make that Lexus less attractive as opposed to how do we barricade that Lexus from being stolen? So before we get into examples, why is that important in real estate? So for buyers, 
by knowing that stuff, they will benefit from understanding crime and how to prevent it. And for all you guys in real estate, these are little bits and pieces of information you can take and you have you can have conversations with your clients about, you know, this is a property, okay, yeah, it's good, I wanna sell it to you. And also this is how we can protect, how you can protect it once you, uh, you know, purchase it and move in and so on. And here's some features that you could think of on how to do it. Realtors right, will be able to evaluate properties better if you're even worth showing to clients, right? We know that, you know, you don't take clients to bad areas, but crime happens in good areas as well. What kind of crime happens in good areas? And how might it occur <coughs> on this specific property, right? That's what, uh, what you learn from this little bit, couple of minutes here. Owners will be able to address vulnerabilities related to their properties, and investors will be able to make more informed decisions about risk and reward, right? That, such as the vacant properties and what kind of things you can do to deal with all of that. So principles are natural access. I'm not expecting you to remember this or memorize. Just kind of browse with me this, right? This is not an education session necessarily. So natural access control, legitimate activity support, image and maintenance, natural surveillance, and territoriality. We're going to give an example of each one of these. So natural surveillance, right? So designing your home and neighborhoods in a way that allows natural surveillance by neighbors and passersby. It can help deter criminal activity, right? This can be achieved through use of windows, porches, and other features to allow visibility. As you can see, people are looking, right? They're not building walls, they're not putting cameras, they're just naturally observing what's going on outside. So, in the UK and US, we have security cameras. In Eastern Europe, we have live security cameras. So, um, take that in for a bit, and I can see, so, so if you imagine that, right? All these people, all these older ladies are looking out, like they know what's going on, right? And actually, in one of the um, for one of the clients, just a few slides ago, where I was noting, uh, we've done one for the justice of the peace, and uh, because she was getting threats, uh, because uh, she was presiding over a very um, controversial uh, case, and so there were threats and so on. And she says, "Well, you know, there's this old so, so there's this older lady uh, that was just walking around there in the area while I was, you know, out in the in the property there." And it's like, "So who, who is this? Why does she keep walking?" Oh, this is our uh, neighborhood grandma. She you know delivers the paper. She does all kinds of you know collection like just. Right, okay, so this is a good security feature you have here, right? Because she would know what's going on that's out of place, right? So that's your natural surveillance, okay? Natural access control, right? Limiting access to residential homes and neighborhoods through single gates, single doors, single barriers. So this, as you can see, it's a celebrated, defined single entrance. Most, uh, a lot of the times what you'll see is uh, a building where, or, or a uh, property where there's several entrances. And you're like, well, where am I supposed to enter? So if you have that question, then those that are trying to cause harm to the property are going to use any possible entrance to get in. So limiting the use to, to have just one, yes, this is one entrance and this is the entrance. And it's celebrated, right? It's upkept, right? So it shows that the homeowner takes care of it and monitors what's going on, less attractive for people to actually break in. So they're gonna go to a site that is maybe less lit uh, less, uh, less upkept and so forth. Um, territorial reinforcement, right? Designing homes and neighborhoods in a way that clearly defines boundaries between private and public spaces. A lot of I mean, this is a little bit, um, you know, a bit of a disaster here. But a lot of places where you go out to a property, you don't actually know where the the site ends and another one begins, or where is the defined boundary between road or public space and private space and that boundary is, is needs to be very clear because that is the line that somebody that wants to vandalize or, or harm is going to cross right so you want to make sure that they think twice before they cross it. and obviously property maintenance just to make sure that things are maintained and upkept to show that you know the homeowner looks after the home and then the home is protected and just there's this visual of what's going on there uh, and legitimate activity support so Promotes the use of the area by the community. For example, playing in parks in the area, right? Uh, having picnics, right? It's actually a good thing if you have your front yard and there is all kinds of strollers and all kinds of stuff there. You might maybe you know maybe concerned about you know somebody just picking up a stroller or like, but that's a small price to pay compared with you have nothing there and there is an illusion that nobody lives there and then it's your your, your house might get targeted. Um, 
more severely than just somebody picking up some child toy here and there. You know, good for them. They really need it, I guess, right? Um, so, uh, just to summarize, large windows, right, promote casual supervision of the sidewalk, right? And that's why low and mid build is good for that, because the higher you are, the less you're inclined to look and the less you're actually observing things. Right, porches and sidewalks encourage interaction between neighbors. That's what we tell our uh, clients. Make sure if you have large trees, make sure you prune them because so that from the bedrooms you can see what's going on around in the entrance uh, ways. Paving and arch architectural treatment define public and private zones. Good pedestrian scaled lighting. Lighting has to be good and low landscaping. None of these things are actual security systems. As you can see, a lot of people are uh, marketing and advertising, selling security systems. We do too. We design security systems. But real good security starts with these features and security systems are just to augment them. They are not the foundation for your home protection. Right? That's, that's a key, key thing that we want to impart on our clients and the people we speak with. Uh, a couple of accepted principles in the city of Mississauga. Right? Uh, they actually, the city of Mississauga incorporated accepted into their uh, uh, urban planning, right? Well designed public spaces, uh, well lit and maintained lobby, large glass, right? People can see outside what's going on, right? Community center with one celebrated, or I mean, it's two pathways with one entrance, right? To incorporate accessibility and all that stuff into the, into the design and so forth. So, again, these principles territoriality, natural access control, legitimate activity support, image and maintenance and natural surveillance. Any questions? Yeah? Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, I didn't quite understood. So for example, you mentioned a couple of times the entrance mm -hmm. thing that it should be a single one. Uh, if the company or whatever, like a residential property asks you, we need more security, mm -hmm. how to make one entrance out of two, for example, like how... Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so every every um, site that we go to um, is different, and so we probably will not tell them to close off an entrance mm -hmm. if, if it's really prohibitive to their business or to what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are ways to reduce uh, the attractiveness of using any other entrance but that entrance. I'll give you an example. We just did a consult in Alberta okay. where uh, they, the way they have it is they're their uh, patio doors mm -hmm. and their front doors are both facing the front. It's just the circular kind of uh, custom built home that it's basically both of them are at the front. So, okay, so obviously they're not gonna lock up the patio door because they'll have no way to really, you know, get out and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. So um, what we suggested is to uh, have, um, first of all, from the, uh, from the uh, interior, we would put just something as simple as a, a wooden bar so that people are not going to be able to force the door open. Then you put uh, the, uh, what do you call it, 3M film, right? Shatterproof, right? You're targeting the, the, the glass from being mm -hmm. broken, right? So you keep the shards in place, but uh, keeps the, 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 the glass in there. Um, we also suggested lighting. We also suggested to uh, prune the tree so that people from, you know, they're playing and they can see there's somebody, mommy, there's somebody behind, like out there mm -hmm. looking around, I don't know who it is, mm -hmm. right? So that kind of stuff, so just to be more comfortable with the environment. But again, it depends on, on, the, on the building layout. So there are ways to do this, yes. Thank you. Anyone else? And in that chat, I would say just be vigilant about your surroundings. Yeah. I do that every day. <laughs> Very much, yeah. So. Just because you're paranoid does not mean that they're not out there to get you. <laughs> 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 yeah? How'd you get into this? It seems pretty kind of like niche. Uh, yeah. Interesting. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I come from the physical security background. I was with the military police for okay. many years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, I decided I just don't want to do military anymore. Uh, so, but I realized that there's this kind of security gap, both in commercial and in industrial, and definitely in residential, most of our clients are commercial, uh, mm -hmm. but we do do a lot of residential. Condos are a big deal for us. We must have assessed, I don't know how many of these buildings, I, I, I mean, we, I have people working on, on this for me, so, but I'm pretty sure we've been to that one there. So condos, um, condos are like a, basically every week something happens in a condo that triggers the board to go out and seek a security consultant, tell them, how, you know, what to do. A lot of condos were built without 
uh, you know, security in mind. The newer ones, they're starting to incorporate that. Mm -hmm. But the ones that were built seven years ago, or maybe 15 years ago and older, there is these basic crimes that happen in all of them. Carjacking, bike theft, smoking in the stairwell, going up to the units and causing a disturbance. So it's kind of like, you know, there are solutions to this, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, um, cool. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I had a question. Uh, when would you get involved more, mostly like in terms of like the planning stage of a new condo, like the landscaper or the oh, urban planners? Whenever they call us. So for example, yeah, yeah that, that varies. That really, that, that really varies. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times we're called when crime happens because that's when, oh, right, we got to figure this out. But uh, we do work with developers to lay out the plan for security before the thing is built so that they can do the conduit, they can do the uh, scoping for the IT, right? All the camera servers that come in for commercial properties, right? Uh, we were very involved in 2018 and 19 with cannabis uh, when it just became legal and there's you know, hundreds of uh, cannabis companies building up their stuff and they all needed security because they, all needed, or they were all regulated by Health Canada to put certain security in there, so there is a lot of planning. They had to do it from the uh, layout stage. Mm 